we're going to install a sauna today. Welcome to our showroom here in Espoo, Finland. Uh, we're going to go through it step by step. First thing, uh, always, as always, is the base frame that goes on the floor. So let's lay it out. There's small screws here uh, that hold these pieces together. There it is, nicely. This base frame has uh, adjustable screw feet underneath because in the room, like a bathroom, the floor is going to have some slope on it uh, to drain the water. Uh, there's no floor in the sauna itself, so it just stands on the, on the floor of the room. Screws are used to, to level the sauna out. So with the water level, we're going to make sure that the sauna is level. Yep, and then the sides. That once this is installed and assembled, there's going to be the glass front wall here. And uh, the feet underneath the glass, actually, the glass is coming down further than the walls. Uh, so it requires a little bit more of space, basically because the slope typically is away from the sound, towards the front. So in many cases, the back side is going to be completely flat, like the screws are going to be scrolled in, and the front end has quite a gap underneath. And because of that slope, uh, we've done it so that the glass is further down. So it doesn't seem to be hanging very high up like uh, it would otherwise then. So because uh, we don't know, in this case, there's no slope. Uh, so we need to reserve that there is some space underneath here so that the glass fits. So that's the case right now. That's fine. Uh, the next step, we're going to install the first walls. In this box that comes with, with the sauna, it has packaged all the screws and everything. Here we find the sauna lamp. And here are the screws. Lamp. The feet for the glass. There's an extra cable. We're not going to need that. Some hinge things screws, a uh, thermometer, we're going to uh, install that later, door handle, and in this case there's a LED light kit. There's two lengths of screws here, um, and I just like to use the longer ones for the wall attachments. Side wall. Now, when you're lifting these walls, I would definitely recommend you have somebody to help you with that. Another thing is that you notice I don't have any safety shoes on, which is not good. You should. fell into place in the frame and uh, this one out of weight back a little bit okay now we just need to get the first screw in and basically with that it will hold up nicely the attaching screws go in from behind and that's a problem in some cases if you have tight spaces I'm just checking the joint. It's far, it's down there. And now I can mush, push this wall back.
and we need to persuade it. There it is. Couple of screws in. There's actually three, like in the lower part. The same for the upper part here. So then we're going to install the other side wall. I'll show you. This is heavy one. So I'm just gonna lean it, lean it against this one. There it is. So on both sides, there are these protective pieces and also on the bottom. And we need to remove those first. A piece of protective wood. this was in a bathroom uh, at this moment what you could do is you could push this into its final place and there's no more weight on it except uh, what you have it here so uh, so it's it's easier to move at this stage and then you also have more room in front of the sauna to work on it so so you can push it back There are holes drilled here, pre-drilled, uh, for the LED lights. We're going to install the LED lights now. These are really high quality uh, LED lights, LED kit, meant for the sauna uh, from a Finnish company, Ledify. Uh, we've been using these for a while now and we're really happy. LED lights have a, a reputation that they don't tolerate heat, but these are made for the sauna. Nice package. In the package then, there is a uh, transformer. Label for the transformer and the transformer. Uh, then there is a connection junction box. I put these lamps in place and I can show you here from here this side. Uh, so we're just gonna push the lamp cable through and uh, I'll finally tighten attach, attach this. These just have this spring so they're really easy. We don't want to have the roof fall down. Be careful when pushing the whole thing. Snap. Snap. 
Then we have the transformer, and we have to have this adjust the, the connection cable for that, I guess. It goes first. Then. One thing that doesn't help is that I'm not so tall. But as you can see, now it's up there and we don't have any problem anymore. It slides back from the front. So even though if you have a low ceiling height, that's all right. You can just put it on from the front and just slide it back. So here, if you can't reach behind uh, and above the, the sauna once it's in your space, if your room ceiling height is low, uh, inside of the wall here there's a tube for the lamp cable. It goes down and comes out from here. So the lamp is going to be placed on the back wall here. Uh, we need to get the cable from the roof into the hole here. So before you place the roof all the way back, if you have the control unit or cable set on top of the roof already now, you can take the cable from there, place it at this moment inside of the hole and get it down and out in, in place. Then after you have done that, then you can push the roof back to all the way to its final place. Oh, there's a cable stuck in between. Let's get that out. There it is. The, the walls uh, are still flexible a little bit. So basically, we, with the roof, tie in the whole cabin and uh, like here we just need to make sure that uh, we pull the walls and make sure the the walls are straight and go align align with the roof so that's better that's better already looks pretty good and here uh, it'll move like that. So now that we have the roof up, we can attach it. As we have plenty of space above this hour here, there's no problems to do this. But if we didn't, actually the factory has already made sort of a little small hole here. You could uh, put the screw at an angle like this and screw it into the roof like that. Just make sure that the roof and the front wall are perfectly even. I'm going to leave a millimeter gap there. But here I'm putting the uh, screw from the top. Gap is this similar, like equal all the way down, so it looks good. Also that the roof is like all the way back against the back wall, it seems to be. All right, let's try that. How it goes. All right, good result. So now, the electrical stuff. Because now we can start putting that in place. This sauna has a remote control system. Um, this is from Savo. This is going to be placed on the sidewall. Show you that in a while. And then we have the electric electricals unit. And Sauna Store supplies this with when you order it with the cable kit. This is how it comes. So this is in Europe for the European electrical system. 
this doesn't apply in any uh, American electrical systems, 110 volts. Completely different system in that case. But for European, 230 volts. Um, this is what we, we use. And in this sauna, the heater is has a one-phase connection, uh, 3.6 kilowatts, and you need a 16 ampere fuse for that. And so this control unit is rigged so that it can be connected into a regular wall outlet. There's a plug here someplace. Uh, and just there it is, it just can be plugged into the wall. Uh, so all the cables are in place already. And we're going to take this and install it. We don't take any responsibility if you go and do it yourself and then something happens, you you connected something wrong and you cause a fire or something. Uh, so I don't make it, recommend it. Uh, also, if you're outside of Finland, for example, we might not know about your local regulations and your electrical guy does know about that. So, so first of all, here, uh, all this cable stuff, there's one cable with a connection box in this kit. And this has all the connections for the fan, the LED lights, and the sauna lamp. They all are turned on when the switch in the control unit, uh, when you're turning on the lights, everything then turns on that is connected there. We have the uh, power cable. We don't worry about that at the moment. We're connecting it separately. And then we have the heater cable. Uh, that's connected. That's coming down to the heater. It has its hole here. It comes through here. And then there's a, um, a data cable for the control unit. Additionally, we're going to be installing uh, a temperature sensor. So we'll start actually with this temperature sensor. And it's marked with a cross on the wall. And we need to drill a hole for this cable. I'm going to actually drill at an angle towards up. Because then when I push the cable in, it's going to go easier naturally towards up. And I need to get the cable onto the top of the roof. take these stickers off they just don't help and to get that through that hole there it's going to be stuck I, you know, unless I take a piece of tape I have a plastic tape here I'm going to cut this tape where's my box cutter Tape these, tape these uh, up so that they just go through that hole much nicer, easier. Okay, there it is. That should go through. Let's see where it ends up. Yeah, success. Well, if this was now against the wall, you'd have to work on this from above the roof. There's a small screw attached to this behind here. I'm going to take that actually off. And it's just the screw to hold that cap in place. And the cap's right there. so gonna need a really small screwdriver. Okay, take the tape off. We don't need that anymore. That's done its job. And then I need to push in the center. There's a latch. Take the latch open. Like that. Okay, the cover comes off. 
all the connections are already done except for the temperature sensor cable and there's one spot left here we can put that in there through that open the uh, because it's attached actually into the circuit board it says temperature fuse right there and the great thing is on this cover it has a picture in instruction which color goes where so it's going to follow that right. and then pull the cables secure secure great they're well in there now we have the temperature sensor control, and everything else is done and we can just put the box back in and the cover cover goes back in first those back side latches in place perfectly in place we need to push on that latch loop. there it is and tighten it back up with these screws the LED light plug and in this cable kit we have this this plug here this is where it goes and we're going to connect it together now we have the connection of the LED lamps here uh, we have this data cable which is connected to the a user panel and I'm opening this up a little bit so I have some cable cable available for me keep everything nice and tidy as much as possible in this circumstance and uh, straightening up the cable a bit and put it underneath right there it's nice and tidy and then this cable here was the heater cable and inside like i said uh, of the wall there's an electrical tube here and i'm going to be uh, putting the uh, the cable in the tube and it goes down inside of the wall here is. If I can't catch it with my fingers, I could use some pliers, to, pliers to, to dig it out. Okay, since we have the cable there, we're ready to attach those things, but let's put the lamp cable in first. Not until every electrical thing is connected. That's the basic, the last thing to attach is the power. We don't want to get electrocuted. Easy to catch the cable through the hole like that. There it is. So we need to connect that cable in here and goes through it in, in here, but I'm opening up these screws. I'll cover this cable a bit. I don't wanna cut my fingers. And I don't want to cut into the wires, just just black rubber like that. And then I need to uncover these wires easier like this. Yep. And then just put this cable through into the lamp. That rubber doesn't normally put in place here, yeah, exactly. It's just what I said. And it's 
So it's L and N. L, like lethal. lethal. So it's this brown one. And we're connecting this in there. We need to get this quite a thick cable inside of that connection connector. We make sure that it goes in there. There it is. And now tighten. Sometimes just there's just problems in getting this cable in place. Because it's so big in comparison to these connectors, which are really small. So far, so good. And neutral and blue cable. Okay, it goes in really nicely. Is it tight? Can I pull on the cables now? Let's see. Yeah, good. And then the ground cable. That black rubber or silicone grommet there doesn't just want to hold in place. It's just always the same thing with this lamp. It's just how it is. Okay, so this goes underneath that screw. Underneath that screw there. Let's try to get that underneath that screw. Holding it in by place with my finger, my Install this, get this lamp installed. So if you have an electrician who's coming in to do this, basically he needs to be there already at pretty early stage because uh, all these electricals, as you notice, we just have the walls, the walls and the, the roof up, and already we're installing all the electrical parts. So it's not like the last thing, it's pretty first thing. So now we're putting in the lamp. And we have everything connected. There it is, the lamp is in place. And I open up the uh, cover. There's the connector sweaty. Just punching up hole here. That can put this fan cable in. Come on, go through. There it is. And now what I'm gonna do is gonna make a knot. A simple knot like a strain relief so it doesn't pull out. Like that. Really well held in place now. And then there's these connectors. It doesn't matter which cable goes to which one. Just put that in there. And snap. Put that in there. Snap. That's it. That's it. And cover back on. Factory has nicely wrapped them up in plastic. Well, I'm pretty sure we have to fix a little bit here in this bench support. We have this end block here, and what it does is that when this is so this is the lower bench support uh, and it's not as wide as this beam is 
it's supposed to be on the side of the wall and as you can see it's not it's on the other side we're gonna take it off and we're gonna move it screws so we take them off let's see if there's any glue no no glue great that's very good makes it easier for us to move it So it was on this side and we're going to move it to the other edge, small detail, but I'm all about the detail. Like, let's just put it on the other edge, easy enough, there it is. Ready, ready to attach now and we're gonna need a lot of this larger screws basically most of these larger ones now remaining are gonna be for these bench supports I'm gonna just pre install these screws on here just makes it easier and these narrower ones are, the shorter ones are for the upper bench. I don't want to damage the floor, so I'm just going to be careful with that. Assembly instructions here. Just going to show you something here. It shows all the steps we've done so far, but here are the instructions for the height of the uh, the bench supports so, so the lower one is 19 centimeters from the bottom of the panel so we're placing it against the wall here and then we need to estimate so like 19 to not to that end block but to the surface and actually we have a factory that has made the marking here already for us and we're really level that's what I want what I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna put the benches in because They go behind the heater and therefore it's going to be easier to lift them in when the heater's not on the way. Yeah, of course, this way. It's a little bit tight, supposed to be. Sometimes it's really, really, really tight and uh, really difficult to get in place, but this is okay, the shorter ones. And there is a screw place here that's flat on that side. this there's a screw place there great and for the middle one what we're gonna do is we're gonna put a screw through the wood here and so it attaches into that heater guard then we need to put in the floor support so this is for the front edge of the lower bench so it doesn't tip over when you're stepping on it 
what we're gonna do is drill a couple of holes in it first. We're gonna drill one hole in the corner and a little bit diagonally another one right there. And we had the two long screws left. We're going to use them now. For the We're drilling or in installing the screws on this one. It's again coming out. Take it back. And I'm going to just verify that are we straight with this. Is it straight? It looks good. Yep. There it is. Okay, and we put this in on its place, just lift it up and actually the, the wall is probably just not completely in like that. Make some space and the edge goes in. And I'm actually pushing it further back. Should just fit. Is it a bit tight? No. It's just that it's at, at an angle. There. So because this bench is also like really rectangular. That's going to help us to straighten out the sauna. And I'm pushing this wall in because it seemed to be not completely straight like that. And as well, this side was out as well. I can see it because it's like a really rectangular, the whole bench. And against the back wall and then evenly on both sides. It will pull in the walls actually once we tighten it. Is I'm gonna make sure this is actually really in the center and I'm gonna attach it to the back wall now. Because it looks like the uh, bench cap is actually a little bit wider than the bench itself. So now I'm gonna Through the bench frame, and that looks great. Okay, very good, very straight. There's plenty of support, so this bench is going to be really, really well supported. So now is a good time to install the heater. Let's open up the box. Unboxing. Let's see what it looks like. The user instructions and the screws. And so we can get the screws out. Lifting up the printer. There it is, and there's a back plate. Not 
to uh, scratch anything with that and hold it against the wall. Uh, we have the electrical power, the power cables coming in through there and it's coming from the wall. Now there basically should be 15 centimeters below the heater but I'm gonna check also in relation to this heater guard so it's about that the same level basically it should be it should be a little bit higher but I'm gonna just put it like really pretty close and then from this side there's going to be also the glass I was gonna have a couple of centimeters before the glass comes but uh, so that it's about three centimeters in so then there's going to be a slight gap between here and it's possible to clean the glass <laughs> and I'm gonna mark here I'm just gonna mark a small small spot at where the, the heater guard is Oh, I'm sorry, the, the back plate is where it's going to be attached to the wall. Just those corners, like really small markings. So I know exactly, exactly where it's going to be. Those are the small markings I made. And I'll attach this side first. So we have the heater cable. We need to attach that to the heater now. In this heater box here where the connections are, there's a couple of screws in this model. Take this cover plate off. Okay, now we should be able to remove that there and come through here with the cable so we loosen this there we have a hole see that diagram we have 230 one phase. We have one cable coming in and there's two connections for the L. Well, we only have one cable. What do we do? The ground, we have the neutral and we have the phase, the lethal. Let's connect first these. The ground is the same color the, the neutral is the same color. You see those gray cables. There's two of them going into the heater. And there's two resistors. And you could attach, like they show that 400 volt to phase connection in here. But they don't have a jumper already supplied with this. So we need to have this one phase, one cable connected to do two of those. And how are we gonna do that? Well, uh, piece just making a jumper. So what I'm gonna do is between these two and in the same hole. Power jumper. Very tight. Yeah. This side as well, of course, there should be. Everything is tight. Good. Now we put the cover back on.
there's extra cable. We're gonna try to pull it up. But I'll uh, just put these in here. Remember to take that out. And then pull it. Wood plugs, let's put those in. If they fall off, and they sometimes do after some use, when the wood dries and so on, what you can do is put a small tap of some wood glue or some white glue very very small droplet on one edge just on the edge don't need to use much very small amount and that will hold it in place then so let's pull this bench to its place and the stop stopper piece you can see that there in the bench there's a gap and it falls in place and this side falls in place as well now we just need to adjust the adjustable screw feet here. That one too. But the bench skirt. So it goes in. And it's attached to the upper bench behind it. Okay, now I got the middle middle screw in. I'm gonna check did I do everything okay? Um, and then I can see those bench supports back there. And I can adjust so that it's even on both sides in relation to those. So then it's straight. That's, that's about, that's really good. So let's put those two remaining screws on. Let's tilt it. So like this. It's going to be tight. It always is really, really tight. There it is in its spot. And then we have the backrest. And I'm going to show you a small piece for that. Actually, what I do is I use the lamp box. Because the thing is, the height where the backrest should be is depending on your preference, but it's about 48 centimeters, 50 centimeters. I'm gonna lift this up on top of that. Okay, 48 and a half. That's pretty good. That's all right. And we're going to see and adjust that it's in the middle and it's straight. There it is. And then it's still straight. I would say so. Perhaps a little bit. Okay, now we can take this box. finish that off we need the wood plugs and there's going to be a problem in installing the wood plugs between those pieces of wood so how do we do that how do we get these wood plugs in when you can't really hit a hammer a piece of wood conveniently that I use for this and 
and I can fit that in there. The hinge post where the door glass is attached to, and that's this one. case I fully agree it's justified for the factory to wrap it nicely. The hinges are already attached to it but as it's screwed into the wood here these screws actually a bit do become loose so we want to tighten them. So it's PZ2, the screw head, and uh, as you can see behind here, the, these are just like embedded into the wood and uh, they could be tighter. Actually I can see already from that side that there's some, one screw that is really loose. So the whole hinge can become loose if these are not tightened. So an important point. That went quite a lot. Wow! That went a lot. Yep. Definitely needed to do that. So. Wow! That's a lot. But this is this is necessary to do, um, and uh, please do it. You, you, your draw door will become loose. It's going to be hanging uh, if you don't tighten the screws there. Here and uh, one screw at a time. I'm going to push this against the roof, hold it with my foot underneath, and as this wall, you can't put the screw straight because then it comes through the back side. You have to put the screw at an angle, but we can't use that hole that straight. We need to do our own. We do need to do it at an angle. Now that, what does it look like from the outside? All the way it's really nicely nicely against the wall and tightly. Same thing from the inside so the, the panel goes against this wood very nicely all the way. Allen screw something number four. Let's open these hinges up. Actually in the hinge packet there's there's an Allen key that he, is meant for this and uh, you can use that for that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take this one thin slice off. There's just plenty of rubbers in between here. Uh, actually I could even take two. There's uh, this is meant for different thicknesses of glass and we have 8 millimeter glass which is really thick and uh, those extra rubbers are meant for thin glasses. By the way, let's put the wood plugs in now. After we put the glass on, we don't want to be hammering with a hammer close to the glass. So much easier to put these plugs in now. Always, 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 when you're handling the glass parts in your bathroom, you have a tile floor. Don't lower it on the tile. Always have some cardboard or something in between.
having my toes underneath the glass when I lifted it on here. You could use something else as well than your toes. This piece that is actually installed to the edge of the roof. Actually here. And I'm gonna check that it's absolutely level with the inside roof here and it's against the side there. I'm just gonna pushing it sideways and checking the level that it's like perfectly level here. First, let's take these floor supports. I'm just gonna screw to open a little bit. Hugely tight there. And I'll place it on the floor, approximately there the glass is going to be and another one I need to vacuum clean this after, right after getting this done now I'm gonna put the slide this into the floor supports at the same time Pushing it. Great. Now we don't need to worry. It's not going to fall anymore. Actually, we're like perfect on this. How it's supposed to be. Pushing up the roof just slightly. I need to do that like, like generally like one millimeter. That it's exactly level on that. So that's the front glass <clears throat> and in fact now uh, as I said there's small adjustment in the glass and we're gonna see about that now. So uh, this package that came with the sauna should have the uh, Allen key. Prefer the key because uh, when uh, torquing these screws you easily get them too tight or you leave them too too loose but with the key you can feel how you're how tight you're uh, making it so right now the key uh, the door is adjusted from the hinges so that it's as much to the right as possible and the gap here is okay but it's maybe a little bit too large so I'm gonna what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna adjust this glass just to take it out just slightly and have the gap on both sides of the glass approximately the same so uh, that's a couple of millimeters so I'm gonna just loosen this up again uh, there's in fact the uh, the rubber gasket from outside also uh, was coming out just slightly so I have a chance to uh, chance to uh, adjust that so it's just gonna be looking nice as well so if the rubber sticks to the glass and, uh... okay let's see what does it look like it's not touching from the top it's not touching from the bottom this is one other thing, you can move the front glass a bit and it immediately affects the gap as well. Yeah, I'm happy with that. I'm gonna tighten it. 
now I can I can feel sort of like how tight and that's good First, let's do this door handle. So the door handle. So the screws with a flat head first through here. And then we put this wood piece in. The gasket goes against the glass, of course. We have these white uh, washers. And uh, so here, again, I like this. You feel how tight you're turning it. So this is wood, and obviously, in the sauna, wood does dry up and it will shrink. And because the wood shrinks, the screw will become loose and you will need to re-tighten this at some point. That's just normal. And the thermometer, the nails go in the place of the dots. So this is a guide for us. I'm just gonna go and nail through the paper. And then I just rip the paper off have the uh, thermometer perfect spot. We're missing uh, the corner post and the headboard. So those are next. Well wrapped. Good thing. The screws are these very big groove ones. Just tight, but not extremely. The wooden headboard covering the edge of the roof. That's what this is. And it's again packaged well. We're gonna use these attachment pieces, just like some IKEA furniture. Like that. And then there's these attachment pieces for this. And we're gonna need a screwdriver to tighten them. Something like this. Let's see how it goes when I tighten them. It should be able to grab onto the head of that. <sighs> Tight needs to be. First a little bit on the other one, and then the other one. Yeah, like that. It's not gonna be easy. That's this one, but I'm gonna take care that that's in the right place. Get this plug straight. And where's my hammer? Okay, start knocking them in. Since I have the hammer in my hand, I'm gonna 
knock on those LED lights, I'm just going to use a piece of wood. So I, I don't need to knock on the LED lights directly. Good, now they look good. And I'm going to open the fan. In order to install this control panel, uh, it has this box. It, this comes off like this. There, there it is. So the cable is coming in from the bottom now. And uh, we'll just barely have enough uh, length there. I wonder if that actually is enough. And move. But this is really loose and this is supposed to hold the this unit here. There's a couple of options. There's these latches inside of the box. We can bend them in. Uh, but I prefer actually one screw in. I'll put the other one in the other corner. Now it's really nice, nice, nice and tight. It's not gonna move about there and then I can install and just put in place this control unit nice there it is there it is take that off we can try to connect the power and I connected I, I turned on in the switch on the top of the box there's number one and there's number two one is the normal operation number two is that only the lights turn on that's like a display system for some stores or something like that so we need to use the number number one there this is what's involved in installing it and uh, so it's definitely like a uh, task to be done in in less than a day. It's not a it's not a very complicated issue. And uh, yeah.